Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be solving an exponential equation with imaginary numbers and Euler's number. Obviously those numbers are very much related and there's a really nice beautiful identity that Euler came up with which we can also talk about. So to be able to solve this problem we're going to write I and E which are the bases in polar form and then we're going to go with the solution. I'm also going to show you a really quick way to approach it, which is also verified by the result that we are going to find. So let's start by looking at the plot of I. How do you plot I on the complex plane? We have this imaginary axis and the real axis, which gives us the real and imaginary parts of a complex number. As you know, Z equals A plus BI where A is the real part and B is the imaginary part, can be plotted or graphed on the coordinate system. And that's going to look like this, one unit away from the origin. That's going to be my point, which represents the complex number. Obviously, in this case, we can talk about a couple different things, such as the radius or the modulus or the absolute value, which we call R, and then the angle or the argument. So in this case, the angle is going to be pi over 2. So we can basically write this number as r times e to the power i theta. r equals 1 in this case, and theta equals pi over 2 for my number. Since I know those two things, I can write i as, uh, or in polar form. So what does uh, r represent? One more time, this is the modulus, and this is the angle or the argument. Okay, great. So let's go ahead and do that. I can be written as r times e to the power i theta, but r is just 1, so you can totally ignore it. And write this as e to the power i theta, and theta is pi over 2. So I can basically write i as follows. So that's kind of interesting because you have i as an imaginary number, right? It's not real. And then when you write it with a real base, the number just shows up again in the exponent. And that's multiplied by pi. Uh, over 2, so on and so forth. Very interesting relationships. Anyways, let's go ahead and raise uh, both sides to the power x. But before before we do that, how am I going to write the e, right? I want to write the e as e times 1. So now the modulus for this number is going to be e, right? That's the absolute value, in other words. So I'm going to write this as e times e to the power i theta. What is the theta going to be for e? Well, e is basically you're on the real axis because there's no imaginary part. The imaginary part is 0. And you have to be e units away, right? It's kind of a weird expression, but you got to be e units away from the origin, which tells you that r is going to be e in this case. Makes sense? That's why r is e. But the angle is going to be 0 degrees, but I could write it in general form as 2 pi, and then just multiply it by an integer, and of course there must be an i in the equation. Make sense? Let's put a 1 for e to the power 1, because that's e, and now we got our e. So we got this number, we got this number, let's go ahead and put it together in our equation. Our equation was what? i to the power x equals e. So I'm going to replace i with this. Let's do it. e to the power i times pi over 2. And then I'm going to raise it to the power x. And then set it equal to e, which comes from here, e to the power. Now, by the way, I can just add the exponents because they have the same base. So I can write it as 1 plus 2 pi and i. Some people write it as 2 and pi i. Sometimes I do. It doesn't matter the same thing. But I'd like to put the i at the end because when you write it like this, that doesn't look good. i 2 p n. You could write i times 2 pi n, but it doesn't look good either. Anyways, I don't know. I, I'd like to keep it at the end. So, what do you do from here? You distribute the x. In other words, just multiply. So, it's going to be i pi x over 2 equals e to the power 1 plus 2 pi n i. Great. We have the same base, so we can totally forget about them and just set them equal to each other. The exponents are equal, which means i pi x over 2 equals 1 plus 2 pi n i. 
Now we're going to go ahead and multiply by something so that we can isolate x because our goal is to get the x by itself. So let's multiply both sides by the reciprocal of i pi over 2, which is 2 over i pi. So we're going to multiply both sides by 2 over i pi and 2 over i pi. And then from here, obviously, these two things are going to cancel out. And we're going to end up with this. Let's distribute to 2, 2 plus 4 pi and i divided by i pi. Obviously, you don't want i at the bottom. You don't want it in the denominator. Nobody wants it, as far as I know. So let's get rid of that. A lot of times people are going to multiply it by i, but I'll multiply it by negative i. Why? Because i times negative i is negative i squared. Let's do it here. And i squared is negative 1, so negative i squared is positive 1. So these two make a positive 1. Isn't that great? So we got rid of the i totally. No negatives at the bottom. I don't like that. So now we're going to distribute to negative i. When you distribute, you're going to get negative 2i, and this i and this negative i are going to be multiplied again to make 1. So we're going to get plus 4 pi n. And then, obviously, that's going to be divided by pi, and that should be the answer in the, I don't know, whatever form you want it to be. But of course, if you want to write this as a, I don't know, write the real part first, you can also write it like this, and that'll do the trick. Okay? So that is the x value. This is in general, by the way, oh, I forgot to mention, but I'm sure you already knew that. n is an integer and can be pretty much any, any integer. Make sense? Okay. So we could also look at it from a different perspective, kind of like a take a shortcut. Instead of going through all this, we could also do the following. We have this equation, i to the power x equals e, right? And then think about it. I could just replace i with e to the power i pi over 2 and then multiply by x and that's going to be e. Instead of writing the e on the right hand side in polar form, let's just leave it at that and write this as e to the power 1. From here we get i pi x over 2 equals 1. And then we can isolate the x in the same way as before. x is just going to be 2 over pi i multiply by negative i again and you're going to get the following. From here, x is going to be negative 2i over negative pi i squared, but negative i squared is 1, so it's just going to be negative 2i over pi. Of course, this is not the whole story. This is just a particular solution taking the, what is it called, the uh, principal branch, but there are um, multiple branches, so that's why we need to add something to this. And how do you find that? This is how you can find it. We know that i to the power 4n is equal to 1 because i to the power 4 is equal to 1. So you can basically write i to the x as i to the x times i to the 4n. And then from here, this becomes i to the power x plus 4n. And then when you write it, uh, you can just basically uh, do the following. Just add 4n to this. And then that'll give you the same solution. Now let's go back to the, uh, the original one and separate these two things and you're going to realize x becomes 4n minus 2i over pi. You can add the 4n at the end or write it like this, you'll get the same thing. You could also look at it from a kind of like a slightly different perspective like, okay, I have i to the x equals e, can I just ln both sides, x ln i is equal to ln e which is 1 and now replace this L i with e to the power i pi over 2 and then from here you're going to get x times i pi over 2 equals 1 because ln e is 1 and you'll get the exact same solution. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then be safe, take care and bye bye.